All right, we definitely have some catching up to do with Derek. It's been a little bit since we've um, read about Derek, so um, let's let's continue this. All right, so right. I've got it. Let's go to the park. To totally, that'd be perfect. I know exactly how to get there. Buckle in. We didn't have to tell you twice. You snapped the seatbelt into place for a ride of anticipation. Antis anticipation it stirred in the air and the car switched to life. Then Derek pulled out onto the street. The park was even closer than you'd guessed because mere minutes after you'd come up with the plan, it had been executed. And luckily, there were a few free spots in the lot. Parking at the park was no trouble. Derek did a hop, skip, and a jump out the door, around the back, and bent inside and popped open the trunk. He rummaged around for a minute before slamming it shut. He joined him outside and spotted immediately what the mini pit stop was for. He locked his car with the clicker in one hand and tucked under. The other arm was a well-worn soccer ball. Everything was ready. You and Derek leisurely wandered down the path toward the heart of the park. When you officially arrived at your destination, the sun was barely peeking over the horizon. It wasn't dark quite yet, but shadows were threatening to fully embrace the scene any minute. Scattered clumps of strangers enjoyed the summer evening all around the perfectly trimmed field of grass. Parents with their children, groups of teens, elderly pairs, people of all stages of life were there to share in similar yet entirely unique experiences. Derek stood by your side. You could hear him inhale deeply through his nose. He took in the sight contentedly. You glanced away from the wide expanse in front of you to face Derek. He smiled for a moment. Your eyes met. The ball was shifting from hand to hand. Want to kick this around? What? I thought you were going to take turns sitting on it. Maybe that would have happened if I was Nicholas, but you're at the park with Derek and he actually uses balls for their intended purposes. I think I can live with that. Nice. Excuse me, my bad. The two of you claimed a far corner of the grass for your own purposes. No one was likely to interrupt you or be hit by a misfire ball there. Derek let, soccer ball, let the soccer ball fall to the ground with a slight bounce. He warmed up by juggling it side to side between his legs, popping it up on the top of one foot and letting it drop off again. Working the ball over the way was second nature to him. Derek might not even intentionally decide to do it. It was purely habit. But then he rolled the ball your way with the tap of his toes. You put more distance between him and you before kicking the ball across the field to return it to the center. He caught it effort effortlessly under his heel. The game was on, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. An easy rhythm developed between the two of between you and him. There are a few people in the world you could sync with better than Derek. Wait, I said that wrong, but we're just gonna skip that. Thanks for not canceling our plans with the water park. I wouldn't miss it for anything. And you didn't doubt that for a second. The day grew later, and the park slowly emptied of other people. In the quiet of twilight, the smacking sounds of soccer ball against feet echoed loudly. One catch of Derek's was especially impressive. He snapped the ball without looking, his fond green eyes squarely on your face. But the longer you played, the more light in his features dimmed. It had been a gradual decline now that you noticed it. However, it was impossible to ignore now. He weakly passed the ball over to you and it was going to stop short. You had to jog closer to even get it to him. His complete loss of energy was concerning enough that you paused the exchange for a moment. Not only watched Derek stand there, shoulders slumped and expression defeated, he felt grateful for the excuse to be nearer to him given by the slow kick because he spoke distantly to himself. It would have been impossible to hear from full length that used to be between you and you still had to strain your ears to not miss his words. I can't believe how long it's been. I'm here with you in my old park. So much is like this. So much is like it was before, but it's not the same. Why can't I feel the way I used to feel about it? You mentioned a similar sentiment at the mall and when you visited Sunset Bird too. Derek pushed it off each time before the thought had continued to eat away at him despite how much he avoided confronting it. You waited for him to say more. You know, you could talk to me about anything. Why didn't you believe your dad when he said you were successful? Why didn't you come back to the city? Um, waited for him to say more. We're not going to push it. He would then... No, he would when he was ready, and you were right. After a few more passes, Derek had a familiar question for you. Hey, Nori, want to hear something embarrassing about me? He pointed. He pointedly sent the soccer ball over again, putting the ball literally, putting the ball literally and metaphorically in Derek's court. He pressed the ball under his heel and stared at you just as hard. 
Distant lamps flickered on around the park. The darkness in Derek's features was contrasted even more strongly when lit up from behind. It was much later than he realized it was. You know my life story, most of it at least. I wanted to be a I wanted to be good at sports and I tried in high school and college I put all put my all into it. After that, there's not a lot of ways you can go. You can either coach or teach or aim to go pro. I had that chance. I could have tried out to make well, to make playing an actual career. Really? That was incredible. And it left you entirely stunned. And all the calls you had and during the entire time you'd been here with him? He's never hinted at anything like that. That's right. He owned up to the admission with deeply feral brows and a self-directed sneer. Maybe I would have made it in the minor leagues. Maybe even the major... Maybe I would have face planted, but I didn't get far enough to find out because I quit. He twisted away from you with a pain shout. Derek struck the soccer ball off towards nowhere with all his strength. It shot into the distance, vanishing completely into the inky skyline before you ever saw it. Saw it start to show. Derek stared at where the old ball from his much younger days had gone, even though it was truly and thoroughly gone. I gave up and left, that's it. You can merely look on with concern. Well, not it for fetching the ball. You chuckled awkwardly. Uh, I missed that catch. You attempted to lighten the mood. Have you been okay while you were away? That's it's all right. We're just gonna say that it's all right. There was no quirk of his brow or tremble of his lips, as if you hadn't spoken. Eric's sullen mask was perfectly set. His empty hands squeezed into iron ball fists, solid and all too heavy to hold up. I did love sports. I think I did. Sometimes I'm not sure I can remember. What I do know is that I had something to prove. If I ever stopped, it felt like I'd be giving up. I'd be a quitter and a failure who couldn't cut it. And I could never arrive either. There was always another goal in distance and that I hadn't reached, so I had to keep going. Derek's eyes were hazy. His eyes... Wow. His chest rose and fell at an unsteady pace. He still hadn't stopped looking out at the dark, expecting and getting nothing from it. Downgrading my playing to nothing more than a hobby would have been the same as not playing at all. Wasted effort, wasted potential, what a shame. That's what people would think. I know it's true, all I did was develop those skills. If I don't use them, then what was the point of trying so hard? For a second time, a long hidden anger crackled. He had faced you in his fury, but again, Derek let it settle back to the somberness before continuing to address you. But like I said, what does that mean? Where could that go other than doing it forever? How did it take me this long to realize that something that obvious? I was going to have to do it forever. That would have been fine if I'd actually wanted to spend my whole life and all of my time on perfecting my passing skills. But no, I'm not that smart. From that, from the start, it was, it was, as wow, it was a means to an end. I'd be good at sports and then I'd feel worth something. And then... I could really live my life, missing time with friends and family, the crazy hours I had been waiting for when it, when that would finally stop. It never did and never would unless I stopped it. You can see the results of my hard work and great planning right in front of you. I went home as a guy who couldn't make it. I got my life back and I don't feel the tiniest bit better. It might be worse than when I was more thick headed and could tell myself I was really doing something. Being here as I turn back the clock, I can't look forward to what life could be when I'm a grown up. I'm just an adult who wasted so much of my life already because I had a chip up my shoulder. And I'm so pissed off. His face fell into the hands. That was where the story of Derek stopped. It was frustrating hearing him speak so badly about himself. You ch uh, ch chafed? Chaffed? Against his over the top? What the fuck? Felt terrible. He wasn't proud of what he's done. He resolved to reassure himself. We're gonna say it felt bad to hear he wasn't proud of himself. How did it end up like that? If there was one person in this world that deserved to hold his head high, it was Derek Sarez. You still have plenty of time. Life is just getting started. I'm proud of you. You could tell me I'm wrong. You could tell me I'm wrong. It's true. You've done so much for people. That's already worth something, Derek. You demand way too much for yourself. It's okay to just live. say you've done so much for people that it's already worth something but Derek you demand way too much I'm gonna say this 
Carefully, Derek's face lifted, his shoulders remained bowed. Though you could see his eyes, regret is what you saw in them, but you had his attention. You were irreplaceable to your family and to me. No one of your character... No one has your character. No one has your determination. No one considers others more. You're not a quitter or a failure or anything else like that. I can't let you keep believing being you is a waste. You should enjoy every day you have coming. I'll be here to remind you of that and help you make sure it happens. Finally, a small smile begins to settle on both of your faces once again. The gloom wasn't insurmountable. Nothing was, but you and Derek were together. You were a team. It was evident in the way he looked at you. Facing the darkness around him left Derek lost, but fears and reservations faded when he had you to lean on. And it was the same for you with him. Man, you're the best person I know. Aww. Why aren't they dating yet? Sorry, I just, I'm confused. He stood tall in front of you with a smile parked on just one side, not because he couldn't make it whole this time, he was just smirking. Okay, I'm about to tell you something that will not be a surprise. My dad did football when he was in high school and college. Hearing stories of that is where my sports aspirations came from. Though I was a little original since I ended up going for a different sport, Derek wanting to be like his father, I've never heard of such a thing. Also, not a surprise that I sucked at it and I was scrawny. I hated that. Getting better became the main driving force in life. And focusing on that, putting in so much effort there, it kind of made everything else easier. Being the oldest, having responsibilities in my family, having to be reliable, it felt less scary when there was an even bigger goal to hit. Everything was nothing. I never had to directly confront my feelings and the inadequacy and accept myself for what I was because instead I could say that I wouldn't be that way forever. I'd become successful. But I put proving myself and being talented over being happy. I missed so many things I barely let myself see you. But things were happening. You were there through all those years. I think that's what really hurts. I could've just been happy the whole time. Derek's words disappeared as a whisper, and in the dark, his eyes closed, and in that moment, he took a moment of silence to mourn the life he might have known if he had had confidence to go for it sooner. I feel that sting is all too well. I think you're really admirable, Derek. Well, let's not miss any more chances. You never had to prove yourself to me. It's not your fault. You don't need to blame yourself. It's not your fault. Don't blame yourself. Your voice reached Derek. His eyes fluttered open, unafraid to face what was ahead of him. No. Yeah, the only way to make this worse would be to spend the next decade wasting time feeling shitty about all the time I missed not enjoying myself. The irony of this is too painful. You gave him a thumbs up. You placed a hand on top of his head. You put a hand on his shoulder. You took his hand. You embraced him. We're going to take his hand because he's not our boo thing yet. After everything you felt, Derek could definitely use a gentle squeeze. You wanted to make sure- pause. Whoa. You wanted to make sure he knew you were there. He held you back as soon as you were there around him. You smile encouragingly. Everything you've done and whatever you will do is good with me. I don't think you have to give up soccer if you do it for the right reasons. I know you'll figure out what's best. Uh, he doesn't- I don't know. Well, we, he, he knows what's best for him. I know you'll figure out what's best for you. If you think so, then it's gotta be true. I'll figure it out, but either way, it's still about the journey, not the destination and all that. On the happiest note possible, Derek released his hold on you to ruffle his hair. Thank you. Thanks, Nori. It's cool being able to talk to you about things. I feel so much better. Derek's face was so hopeful and gentle and wonderful. Nori, I... Without thinking, you leaned towards him. You were naturally drawn in with his beautiful green eyes. You tugged forward for nothing. He waved the half-formed statement away like it was a broken string in his face. Get it. Never mind. It, that's something else I gotta kick around more in my head. Amongst the wash of disappointment, you got a prickling sense of deja vu. He made the same move before. And then, seemingly out of nowhere, Derek let out a bellowing groan. The massive release, you know, of air looked to physically deflate his body. Derek's torso dropped lower and lower until he could have touched his toes. He was expectedly flexible. I have to go get the ball now. You laughed instantly, partly at the revelation and partly at the dramatic sulk he had been said with. Still bent in half, he stuck his head against his hips and twisted his head up so you could see him wink. It was a gift, so I'm not going to abandon it here. I forgot about that. Oh well, count me in. We tackle life's problems together. You know it. Team Nori and Derek forever. At the wholehearted, 
charioteer, Derek ran headlong through the brush. You chased after him with leaping steps. You peeked under every picnic table and behind every trash can in the general area before the lone soccer ball was discovered tucked away amongst some flowers. Thankfully, none of the petals were harmed by coming to rest in their bed. Derek lifted the ball over his head dramatically as if he was in the lead of a video game who got a brand new item equipped. You applauded. The two of you returned to Derek's car. From there, the last one still in the lot and left the park behind victoriously. You shuffled back into the silent apartment after another long day out. When Derek, when Derek hit the lights, the light switch and illuminated the space, he began to chuckle airily. Oh, the first sight that greeted you was counters spilling over with unsorted bags of mis miscellaneous dry goods. They remained right where you left them in the rush of that morning. I forgot this was the same day. Patiently waiting for their turn to be put away. Y'all, this that was way too much to do in one day. I would be tired. Anyways, even though you put some some of them there, their existence had entirely faded from your mind. All you've been imagining when stepping through the door was a free and clear path to your room in the apartment and the cozy bed that was included. Your thoughts were spoken aloud, though not by you. I forgot about those. He scratched the top of his head like he was staring at the blackboard covered in algebra, but he cleared away the initial bewilderment with a firm clap of his hands. Derek kept them clasped together with, while glancing at you. You can go get ready for bed. I'll put them away real quick. I'm going to feel uneasy trying to sleep if I know this isn't done. You shook your head and stayed put. That happens to you two. I can never leave a mess unclean overnight. Some of those are mine. It's only fair if I put those. You're such a mean freak, but I'll help you. We're going to shake our head and say, stay put. Derek had to be Derek and offer to do it all himself. However, you had to be you and insist on helping anyway. His brows pinched with a twinge of regret that his problem was becoming yours. However, you didn't need to explain again how that was what you wanted. Derek swallowed the instinct and insisted you to go to bed or apologize and grin instead. Time was called and you got to work on your final task before rest could come. There was more of a system for the cupboards than there was with the fridge and freezer. You, fit, you fished goods out of the bags, passed them to Derek, and he placed them on the shelves where they belong. As he rearranged his serviceable spice set to make room for more goods, Derek explained his thought process. He preferred having breakfast stuff in one cupboard at the far end of the kitchen, seasoning and the baked goods together in one, the shelf closet to the stovetop, and everything else in the middle. When you got in a layout, you switched to putting items away directly instead of playing a support role. With your combined efforts, it only took a few minutes. After the plastic bags had all been stuffed into the space under the sink, you high tended smacking both your hands against Derek's for a job well done. Having a partner to tackle the small things was just as nice as having someone you could count on for life's bigger struggles. Derek had matched your thoughts on forgetting the groceries and you felt that working together to put those away had brought your minds in sync again. His expression was peaceful, a weight had been lifted off his broad shoulders, both from the perfectly orderly kitchen and company he had within it. Derek waved a hand in the arch that was as wide as the smile on his face. Night, Nori. Good night. Have a safe trip to your room. Your quality time with Derek was put on a temporary pause to prepare for the bed and collapse in your sheets, but in the blink of, but in the, blink the sun had risen once more. You repeated the process of getting ready through the goal. Wow. Oh, with the goal of being ready to face the day rather than conclude it, and you made sure you dressed appropriately for what you'd be facing. There was a long drive ahead. From there, you went to the living room. The perfectly clean counters were a welcome sight after your efforts of the night before. Those last moments of the previous day had gone by so fast, and you fell asleep so immediately it honestly felt like a 10 minute timeout had been called rather than the several hours passing. But Derek's arm, wow, Derek's arms, bruh. Derek's warm greeting was still welcome to your ears. Morning. It's a brand new day, a fresh start, and we're already set to make the most of it. His resolve from the park hadn't been lost under the light of a new day. Rather, the Derek from the dark moment seemed a lifetime away from the man in front of you now. Morning, today's going to be an adventure, for sure. How'd you sleep? It was another good night. I slept soundly. Awesome. His eyes darted towards the tidy kitchen. Where plenty of supplies were tucked away and his gaze returning you. Before a big day, we've got to have breakfast. Can't be running on an empty stomach. Yeah, I'll get something. Derek's meal consisted of scrambled eggs and a side of cinnamon steel cut oats. Cooked in almond milk, you prepared some turkey with simple 
accompaniment? I don't know how to say that. Plates, bowls, cups, and utensils were all set on the table. The two of you set yourselves down in chairs. You noticed Derek focused on a single part of his food at a time. He didn't start working through the oatmeal until the eggs were entirely done. Between bites, Derek chatted idly about your plans. Do you have a swimsuit? I know I'm asking this now. The morning we're going. I should have checked ages ago. I was excited. But we can stop by somewhere to get one if you don't. Your preparation game is slipping, Mr. Sarez. However, mine is still razor sharp. I packed a swimming suit. I usually end up needing it at some point when I'm back home, even if I don't always know exactly why. I grew up right next to the ocean. Having swimming gear on hand was second nature. You'd probably bring it even if you were going to the top of the mountain. He snickered. Good point. Let's pack it all up as soon as breakfast is over. We can hit the road right away. Oh, and they have changing rooms there. We won't have to drive all the way there in our swimming suits. Just remember to bring it along. His planning instincts came back in full force as he rattled off a list of potential items to pack. Water, the swimsuit, a towel, a change of clothes, sunscreen, cover-ups, maybe. You join in on the discussion. You listened happily to his chatter. You've been to feel nervous now that time. Okay, we listened happily. Um, Derek made even basic listicles fun. Is that how you say that? Listicles? Never heard of that before. And every possibility should be covered with someone like him on your side. Derek grew more and more eager as he spoke. He stopped briefly to polish off his oatmeal and down a bottle of sports drink. You followed his lead and made quick work of your breakfast. Both of you cleared off your own dishes. From there, you went straight back to your rooms to gather the new supplies you needed. You had a carry-on sized bag as a part of your luggage that you could use for the day trip. It had been emptied out already for your stay at Derek's. The first thing you packed was your swimsuit. It was... A speedo, a one piece, a bikini, a tank this. Uh, we're gonna use a bikini and pack a t shirt, a shawl. You took shorts, a hat, a towel, and a t shirt and shorts. And then we'll grab the water bottle as the last piece. It was great that you would get to go swimming, you were going to look fantastic, the thought of going to a credit park and it was stressful, the thought of wearing it from Derek was stressful, I can't wait to see what Derek will be. Uh, we're going to, we're going to be confident, we're going to look fantastic. You were set to impress. That was crucial consideration when you chose the swimming suit. A few more bits and bobs were slipped into the pack before you zipped it up. You mentally ran over the contents going through an imaginary checklist for all the important supplies. When you felt certain that you had everything you need, you slung the bag over your shoulder and regrouped with Derek in the living room. His gym bag was under his right arm. Derek attempted to give you a thumbs up without letting it slip out. This is gonna be good. Yeah. You left the apartment behind knowing you wouldn't be seeing it again until the day had ended. Once Derek, you, and your bags were packed in the car, he pulled out the lot. Derek and your first big outing was as the two of you had begun. There was a lengthy trip ahead of you, but Derek had it all under control. You used the opportunity to check in with family and friends. With how busy each day in Prison Vista City has been, it was only in moments like this where you had a chance to keep up with texts. Lee was on a trip herself, gall gallivanting around Europe. She sent you a whole series of photos she's taken, from foods she's eaten to fashion she'd worn. It's all, it all looked amazing. Liz shot you back a message to say that she was so swamped she apologized but had little time to chat with her little sister. Knowing Liz was okay comforted you and so did seeing how her queenly attitude still hadn't changed but it was a bit sad that both of you had been had such separate lives now that you were grown. But once you put your phone down in your lap Derek was there to avoid any dead air. He chatted boilishly boyishly about the water park. He recounted stories of the past excursions there with his family over the years. How one time they almost got kicked out because of Nicholas jumped into Dar jumped onto Derek's back to go down a single person slide with him instead of waiting to have his turn. Luckily no one was hurt and they got off the hook in the end. It was hard for anyone to see mad at a kid like that. Then as if his words materialized the mythic lost city into existence, the massive slides Derek had been describing began to rise up against the skyline. The sparkle in, the, in his eyes as Derek spotted them only added the legendary effect of what you were beholding. You would arrive. Before you could enter, though, the hollow gates, you had to pay a terrible price. $15 for a day parking. 
wow, fifteen dollars for a one day parking pass and then forty five dollars for tickets. It was worth the cost according to Derek and the exchange was made. The afternoon was young and when you actually made it inside the water park it was a dazzling playground with rides curving and looping through the air, taller than the palm trees, lazily fluttering in the breeze. Their leaves greeted every guest with friendly flicks of their frond. And the entire place was rimmed by an expansive artificial wave pool that broke off into smaller streams, squeezing through the walkways. Right. He jogged ahead with all the enthusiasm of the first time goers, spinning around to place well, to face the person who he had actually never been here before. Let's get on our swimsuits, then we can get started. The individual changing rooms and showers are over there. Eric poked a finger off to the left to direct your gaze. Over the heads of strangers rubbernecking, you could make out some simple beige buildings. It was the only part of the place that wasn't immediately eye-catching. Plus, there are lockers you can use to keep yourself safe. Want to meet us? Want to meet up back when we're done? I can handle that. Be back in a flash. The huddle of t the huddle of two broke, and you got in line for the bathrooms. Eventually, you got your own stall. In the privacy of the small space, you performed a grand quick change act for no one but yourself. You were ping-ponging off the walls that bikini couldn't get on you fast enough. Derek was waiting, maybe not specifically for the swimsuit, but he would be waiting for you. And you were waiting to show him. Though after throwing on, throwing one set of clothes off and another on, you paused to make sure nothing was left behind. With all your belongings bundled into your arms, you fumbled the lock open and left the stall in record time. You were charged. You were charged again to claim a locker during your visit. It was the real amusement park experience. With a shrug, you packed your clothes and phone inside for safekeeping. Then you made your way back to the entrance. Through the crowds of other guests, you continued forward until you spotted Derek standing with his now bare feet at the edge of the pool. Water bubbled over his toes when the waves came in. He was sporting only a form-fitting black swimsuit. Streaking down each side was a green accent that made his eyes pop out more than usual. What's up, gal? The verdant eyes were focused right on your black ones. The fixation was so intense, you couldn't help getting the impression that it was a pointed avoidance of looking anywhere else, like your swimsuit-clad body, for example. All set? Yeah? You hummed quietly, so did you pick the water park to see me in a swimsuit? Can I say I appreciate your swimsuit? Um, we're gonna say, did he pick the water park to see me in a swimming suit? I can't believe it happened again. Eric stumbled in a rush to explain himself. You had been joking, but he took it very, very seriously. No, no, totally. No. Though, it isn't like I didn't think of that part being that part. Wow. Hold up. Let's restart that. No, not totally. Though, it isn't like I didn't think of that being part of it. But, uh, wait, again? When was the first time? The obvious. That's obvious. When we were little teens and you invited me for a swim in the pool at your apartment, Nicholas told on you, and so did George. It was clear he remembered then. Derek's eyes narrowed at the treacherous little bro little brothers who were somewhere off in the distance right how could i forget I'm not that lucky we should let this drop and get going before i before i keel over in the early grave that's still waiting for me he snickered at his dramatics but didn't actually want to chance it the topic ended there fine where should we get started i want to do anything and everything there's no way to lose what the fuck did he say i feel like i said that wrong whatever he recollected the main attractions derek had filled you in on during the ride. With the severity of the authority on the topic, even though you had never stepped foot in here before, you told Derek where you hoped to start. How about a trip to the lazy river? We could explore the water playground. I want to swim in the wave pool. Uh, let's go down some slides. Hell yeah. He shot a hand towards the twisting yellow one, making it very clear which ride you were intent on going for. Derek had a thumbs up for that one. Good choice. The two of you raced across the park and came to an abrupt stop at the long clustered group of people who all had the same idea as you. Amusement park lines and peak summer visiting hours were no joke. You inched forward every minute or so. Screams echoed from the top of the stairs as the guest after guest hurtled down the water slide. Distant surf rock played over the speakers as you waited for your turn. You didn't even notice it was there until you got higher up on the steps. Derek entertained himself and you by doing little dances and playing an air ukulele in time with the tune, you snickered all the way to the launch platform. It was a closed top rather than a half pipe. There was a perfectly round opening for the slide that continued into a deep, dark descent. A low roar came from the swirling waters flooding through the massive tube. It was the straw of a giant trying to suck you inside. Your heart pounded. After you. You shook your head. You quietly stepped ahead. Oh, I'm a little nervous. Can you go? Here I go. Thanks. I'm going to say thanks. 
The ride technician led you to the to the lip of the slide, listed off the safety measures that they'd certainly recited a million times before, and gave you the okay to push off. There was no need to tell you twice. You scooted your butt right to the surge, and you were off. You zipped down and around as if you were a gumball in one of those fancy machines that made the treat go through loops before arriving in an awaited child's hand. But the warm embrace that you landed in was an explosion of heated pool water. A massive smile stayed on your face as you surfaced. There was no time to get stuck in a daze. A reverberating woo chased after you through the narrow path until once again the water was launched into the air by dramatic arrival. You and Derek waded through the waist deep water, catching the breath that had been taken away by the rush. It was a wild ride, but only the beginning. You were certain to hit every one of the half dozen big slides in place. With that achieved, you suggested to do something else. You kept jumping in line for slides for the rest of the day. Uh, let's do something else. Um, how about we explore the water playground? Yeah, we could. It's over this way. The slides were front and center of the park. Derek brought you around behind them. There was a water playground, a rubber coated floor with a few inches of water over the entire space clearly dif differentiated this area from the rest of the park. At the heart of it was an impressive jungle gym with multiple level bridges leading to different structures and water jets shouting while wow, shooting out everywhere. But the star feature was a truck sized bucket threatening to spill its contents over at any moment, it was Saturday morning cartoon playoffs come to life. The section was mostly for younger guests based on this, the signage and the fact that it was full of kids, but it was big enough for grown-ups too, and you didn't want to miss out on anything. Besides, Derek would have told you if it was a bad idea, or maybe his childlike impulsive streak was showing its true colors, and he simply didn't care about technicalities either. It was hard to say, but at least he was having a good time. The two of you clambered up the steps and explored the catwalks. Derek ducked and weaved to avoid the spray of nearby fountains before intentionally sticking his face into the one closest to the jungle gym. He shook his head to get the water off, hitting you with the crossfire. He sputtered a laugh, stunned in place by the surprise splash. Derek leapt over a tiny flight of stairs off the jungle gym to put more distance between you. But there was no time to form a proper reaction to any of that before there was a new source of excitement. The bucket is about to drop. Shouting, Derek opened his arms wide and beckoned towards you. You ran down to him. You ran to Derek and grabbed his hand. You sprinted past to get there first. I'm going to pass on that one. You jumped off the platform. I'm going to jump off the platform and into his arms. Whoa. Derek stumbled a step on impact. Despite the unexpected stunt and the added difficulty of, of you being wet, he caught you like a champ. The momentum didn't stop. Derek spun around and sped towards the splash zone, bringing you with him. The massive tank gradually tipped until a waterfall spilled over, completely submersing you in its flood for a single moment. Then it was all over. The only sign that happened was a small wave that rippled out from the drop point and through the rest of the playground. Derek shifted over to help you get down on your feet. I'm not doing that again. You laugh carefree. Woo. We're going to say woo. The high of the of the on-landing plunge lingered and you cheered at the top of your lungs. Yeah! Uh, okay, obviously we're gonna go do something else. Oh, uh, let's swim in the wave pool. What a coincidence! So do I! The particular attraction was the majority of the park. It's wrapped its way against the walkways and up until every corner. You didn't need Derek to point out the way you wanted to go as you were essentially already there. Derek knew that too. There was no need to pick a different spot or an expansive pool. He just jumped in. You joined him in the water. It was an interesting experience. The wave pool, the pool had gradually sloping shape with a shore on one side. The waves pushed from one end to the other on a timer. They were going to win. They were going when you got in. You bobbed up and down with the replicated motion of the ocean. Usually you had to choose between a man-made swimming experience or still water in a perfectly shaped hole or the vast, wild, unpredictably unpredictability of the scene. You thought it was fine, the wave pool was in the category of its own in a bad way, the wave pool was in the category of its own in a good way, the wave pool's attempt to mix them was a terrible idea, the wave pool, we're gonna, we're gonna think it's fine. Nice to try, but not exactly life changing, you'd just be happy in a pool or at a, at a beach. Um, we're gonna try, you swim to the pool, you tried wave riding, you splashed Derek while his garbage. We're gonna try wave riding. The waves seemed big enough for it. Derek came over to meet you, grinning eagerly. What are you up to? I'm gonna ride the waves. Have you done that before? No, but I can try. Alright, you can watch me. 
There wasn't much to it. You waded towards the deeper end and kept your back facing the direction of the waves coming. When you felt water forming, you lifted your feet off the floor and kicked them out, letting the water move you with it. You kept your face up and managed to go halfway across before the momentum petered out. Standing up again and waving over at Derek, he signaled that it was his turn to go. You could tell he was trying to mimic you rather than understanding what was meant to be done. His form was off. The water tossed him around like a, like a lost flip-flop. Whoops. It was fun to go for a ride whether you knew what you were doing or not. You greeted him with a big smile when he washed up next to you. You both managed to hit a few more good ones before the waves were shut off for a short break. Okay, then we got out the pool, and then how about we take a trip through the lazy river? Definitely. Derek wove his way around the paths. He didn't need a map to navigate the area with confidence. Around a bend and flanked by a row of palm trees was a sloping artificial shore that led into a river rather than the wave pool. There was a single employee tasked with passing out donut-shaped floaties for the ride. Here we go. He strolled up to the park worker, holding up two figures. They got the message and handed Derek two tubes. One was kept for himself and the other was obviously for you. Getting into that float wasn't relaxing or graceful. As tacky as it felt when dry, it was, it was a tricky beast to mount when you hit the water. You barely avoided both flipping over the side face first into the river and bending entirely inward and slipping through the whole entire center. Derek had his own tribulations. He gave you space to kick off but waited too long to follow. You were going down the ride without him. He got into the water on his float, paddled his arms, flailed his legs, and pumped his chest forward and back in an amusing attempt to get some forward momentum going. It was not effective, so he went with plan B. It did not surprise you that he had a plan B in a slightly sacrilegious, I don't know what that word, move. He got off the tube to swim through the lazy river. Once he reached you, he dove under the surface, came up through the hole of his float, and made use of the upper body strength to pull himself into the sitting position. Finally, you were properly situated. Derek was at your side, and the leisure time could be begin in earnest. The sun's heat fell down over the world so hard it might have been a physical blanket draped on top of you. But, the, unders the underside of your body that was dipped in the cool water kept you the temperature comfortable. Man, I can't remember the last time I was in this river. Nico never had patience for it, so we skipped it every time we came here. I can imagine that. Mild conversation followed on and off about appropriately mellow topics such as the weather and how pleasant the drive there had been between there were moments of quiet resting. At least really as the pace was, Slow and steady could still win the race. You made a full loop around the park and drifted back into the starting bay. Or cove, you might say. You chuckled to yourself and sunk lower into your tube. The ride was so relaxed you began to fall into that special kind of half-awake humor. For hours there was nothing in the world but water, fun, Derek, and even more water. There was no work to be done or places to be. You had to do nothing, but whenever you felt like doing... You wrung out every bit of enjoyment until time caught up by your heels. Light started to wane as the sun hid behind the towering slides. Dripping wet and thoroughly wrinkled, you and Derek scampered over to the lockers. Turning the knob was not easy. It was not an easy feat in your current states, but you needed towels and money. After a long day in the water, you were starving. You ignored the grumbles in your stomach to focus as, po as much as possible on keeping your grip with slippery fingers. Finally, you managed to break open the safe and access the goods inside. You plucked up the towel that has been resting on the top of your clothing pile. It was an inspired piece or forethought, forethought to make it as accessible as possible. If only you considered taking your wallet out of your pocket ahead of time. You made good use of the towel until your hands were dry for the first time, and you weren't even sure how long. Then you started to dig for your money. Derek leaned back on his heels and craned his neck to look past his locker door to you. Ready? I wish. Why is it so much hard getting stuff out of your pocket when you aren't wearing the dress? Oh, maybe it's a positioning thing. It's an annoying thing. Uh, after a final awkward tug, you succeeded in warming, in warming the wallet out of its fabric cocoon. There we go. With the flick of your wrist, you closed your locker. Getting dressed could wait. A second clattering slam followed right after. Derek shuts his too. He tossed his neon towel over his shoulder like a shawl. Then he folded his arms. Honestly, the food here isn't bad, for theme park restaurants at least. It's worth trying. That's good. A decent meal is exactly what I need right now. You made like your wallet and securely wrapped yourself in a towel. It dampened instantly. But was still very cozy. 
You made a break for the central area where the poolside restaurant was set. Your towels rippled in the wind and your feet slapped against the concrete path. You felt free as a bird and all 13 years old. Water park restaurant had only outdoor seating and a small shack where the food was prepared. But the rich, savory scent wafting from the sliding openings on the front of the building convinced you more than enough. Once you and Derek got to the window, you wasted no time putting in orders, paying and setting up camp at the closest available table. He leaned fully back against the white plastic chair and chuckled contently. It's been a long time since I've gone to a park, this one or any others. I'm always busy, right? So busy we barely made it today, but we did. Exactly, we did it. His cheeks and eyes lifted, please. You were more grateful than ever to be there at the water park in the state you grew up in and at the sight of a very, very good friend. Your meal soon arrived and was finished briskly. Swimming had made you entirely famished. The potential post-food conversation was cut off for you and Derek and every single person in the vicinity. It began with an echoing bell over the entire park and then the transition into a spoken message. The employee announced as cheerfully as possible that the park was closing soon and all the guests needed to get out of the pools. Derek glanced up into the sky in the general direction where the disembodied voice came from. I swear. Man, it went so fast. At least it was really nice while it lasted and we can make tomorrow good too. There was something in his wandering gaze and the playful quirk of his lips. The end of the occasion had skipped all the other stages of grief and gone straight to acceptance for Derek. Tomorrow is well. I have a feeling it won't be too hard to have some fun. He watched him with intrigue, fully expecting to be led in on what kept his spirits so high, but he merely grinned your way and explained nothing. Still, the approach and closing of the park spurred the both of you on. It wouldn't be responsible to dawdle. You trash your thrown out, you jumped into the shower for a brief wash before changing into your actual clothes, getting back into Derek's car. It was late by the time he parked once more into his designated spot for the apartment complex. What little remained on the night was passed in peaceful relaxation around the apartment before collapsing into bed. Alright. <laughs> Early morning. While wow. early the next day, you lazily hung around the apartment. Derek was showering after the gym, and you'd both already had a quick breakfast. It was true change of pace to have a slow morning, a slow day on your trip. You welcomed the break. Derek wanted to pop over to his parents' house one more time. He was still itching to get his hands on Nico's switch, but there was a blank schedule beside that. No long travel, promises to fill, or plans to keep up with. But to balance out the one free day, and next was set to be extra full. Tomorrow evening would be leaving Prison Vista City, your bus ticket was already purchased. You need to pack and prepare and somehow do everything you could ever want before it was too late. Truly grasping your own departure wasn't easy. So much had happened, but it all felt way too fast, like a much anticipated audiobook set to five times normal speed. Your life with Derek was very nearly only a memory. Your adventures at the water park had taken place in your mind right before the time you got to go to the boardwalk with the Saras family. Whether it was years ago or only a day ago, over was over. Being close in time made it no more reachable in the present. That's depressing. Time is depressing, y'all. A cheery holler from the hall shook you out of your own head before you could get entirely lost in it, thank god. Hey Nori, I'm ready to go. Finally, I've been fading away out here. Let's go see the family and feel alive again. That's the plan. His eyes twinkled boyishly as he grinned at you. Your lips worked up at an infectious enthusiasm. Everyone there is looking forward to seeing you. Come on. Derek led the charge out the front door, which he locked behind him and onward into the Euror until you had arrived at Sarez's front door. You rang the bell and didn't have to wait long before Mrs. Sarez's eager face appeared. The expectant smile was identical to the one she saw when you were first reunited. Good to see you. Good morning, Derek. Nori, welcome back. She ushered the two of you inside with a much, much gumption as your original arrival as well. Before you could question that curiosity, you were confronted by another, the living room, where you've been led into entirely empty aside from you and Derek and his mom. Three Sara's men were missing. George could be on his way. Nicholas might be waiting for the guests in his room, and perhaps Mr. Sara's needed to use the bathroom. Separately, any of those possibilities made sense, yet all of them being the case at once felt odd. Should we have come later? No, your timing is perfect. She smiled at you wider, but the leading tone of her voice and the Nicholas-esque gleam in her eyes wasn't particularly comforting and only made you more certain that something was going on. You were going to ask, but then the words slammed against the back of your throat when George and Nico sprung up from behind the chair. Surprise! How did they fit? 
That's what really got you? The Sara's living room wasn't suited for hiding. The boys must have been lying on the ground, pressed together, and you had to be positioned at the exact right angle to not see them tucked away. Your wide-eyed expression was their reward. The two jumping jacks laughed openly and even kind, and even kind Mr. Sara's clapped her hands together in, satisfa in satisfaction at your, well, at your slack jaw. But what is the surprise for? You stammered out the question, still in the daze from the entirely unexplainable jump scare. What do you think, genius? The voice of the sharpened whip and unmistaken you can't manage to blink since the younger star has a shout and the trend continued. Oh. Pointing your dry eyes towards the kitchen, you had to wonder if you were seeing things. Somehow, magically, your older sister had appeared out of thin air to leer at you smugly from over the counter. The laws of space-time were no consideration when it came to teasing you. Liz? Duh, of course that stunt wasn't their idea. Your eyes started back and forth between her and the stars as you stared speechless in total disbelief. You ran up to Liz and pinched her. That's what she deserved for shocking you. You ran up to Liz and pinched her cheek to see if she was real. You rushed over and hugged her. You stumbled down. Uh, we're going to stare speechless in disbelief. You've been anticipating the most normal day of your entire visit. And now, Liz flipped her bright orange ponytail over her shoulder like she was doning a scarf at the f of the finest silk. Gotcha. Yep, she had. She couldn't have gotten you more if she had glued your shoes to the floor with her own hands rather than rooting you in pure while wow, rooting you in place purely for her unexpected presence. The persistent self-satisfaction Liz had radiated throughout the room was reeled in to reveal the softer, more genuine pleasure. How good to see you, little sis. What happened to being so busy, Liz? That was merely a ploy I'd never too busy for you. Or a bonus trip where all I had to do was show up. Huh? What do you mean? Liz laughed with an all-knowing air. It was a sound you were very familiar with. I do love you, but I wasn't going to arrange an entire trip to join you now when I already had to prepare one for Mom's party in less than a month. You can thank your beefcake friend for handling the details and his parents for letting me borrow their guest room. That's how it happened. He's nosy as well as persistent. Derek was involved? You had felt nothing but shock. You f wait, you had felt nothing... You had felt nothing could shock you after Liz reveal, but then you had been proven wrong. The man who suddenly had the spotlight thrown on him stood with an awkward stiffness. His arms were folded so tight, the form might have been chiseled out of stone. Is that supposed to be a compliment or an insult? Neither, it's the truth. I'm gonna take that in a positive way then. Good for you. Derek, you really helped Liz with her trip out here? Derek's grin shrunk shyly. The decision to view his actions in good light was being put to test now, but it was your turn to talk about them. Listen, the sibling group wouldn't have been the same or complete without Liz. Who knows if she could have had time to come to the city during the mother's an anniversary. Nicholas and George missed her. Especially Borgie. Nico shot out that commentary without looking away from his phone. George glared completely unseen by the target of the daggers, but he didn't vocalize his disagreement with the statement. And we figured you wouldn't mind seeing your sister when she came by, so we worked it out. Surprise. Oh, you beamed at him gratefully. You didn't have to do that. Oh, okay, I got it now. Derek Sarah's, you're too nice. Wouldn't mind. This is amazing. Um, you didn't have to do that. You know where is it? It was all me. If I thought my time could have been better spent on something else, I couldn't blame anybody but me, and I don't feel like it was a waste. Bashfulness crept over his features even more, though. Like Derek's general perspective, it was a good kind of bashful rather than a bad one. He was pleased with himself. And then... The door at the very end of the hall burst the entire room simultaneously peered in that direction. Surprise! Mr. Sarah's had finally made an appearance of his own and it was his, and it, and it was an entrance. He waved his hands in the air and walked over with a jaunty high step. The parade of unexpectedness to the day was endless. Before you could even ask questions, Mrs. Sarah's explained what that was about. <laughs> Mr. Sarah's was going to be behind the counter, however, I banished him to the bedroom until he was certain Liz's scheme was finished. He was laughing too much. He was going to run it. I was gonna. I was going to go get him myself, but he managed to figure it out. Every single one of Miss, every single one of Mr. Sarah's sons not in support of their mother's decision, including Derek, who wasn't there when it happened. He must have been able to imagine it easily enough. Yes, I didn't get to stay, but I could still join a little late. It's an extra surprise. That's making lemons in the lemonade. You never had a reason to wonder how Derek ended up with so much optimism. Very good. Thank you for being a good sport, my wonderful husband. You are welcome, lovely wife, and welcome. To you, Nori and Derek, we're all here. That's right, we are. 
The cavern and Sara's family enjoyed a mini reunion full of affection before eventually things settled back into a casual atmosphere. The addition of Liz into the mix was truly seamless. George and his parents bustled around the kitchen to cook their own late breakfast. They'd hang. They had no time for food while waiting to make a grand reveal. Nicholas elected to help by not getting in the way. He sat at the table with his face on his phone. The youngest had been completely sucked into the screen in a way you hadn't seen him before. You stuck your sister. You stuck with your sister on the couch. Derek flanked her on the other side. She recounted her traveling adventures, including how, at one point, she too had to ride a bus and that it actually took a wrong turn. Since when did bus drivers take the wrong turn route? Liz demanded on the air. A long list of points worth noting continued right up until a new announcement was cheerily made. Food's done. Hooray! Eggs, sausages, and well-seasoned diced potatoes were prepared. With fresh fruits available on the side, the whole room smelled of pepper, garlic, and a host of other savory spices. Derek already ate, and Liz politely passed in the meal as well. She had way too many snacks during the overnight trip and couldn't have another bite. You decided to have a little, not wanting to reject their generosity. You didn't know about them, but you weren't ever going to pass up free food. You realized you were still a bit hungry and accepted the offer. You declined a serving too. Um, we're going to decide to have a little, not wanting to reject their generosity. Your very kind host stood aside so you could get your meal first. You, you didn't want to keep them waiting or disagreeing with the order. You got off your seat, filled out a dish with some breakfast, and returned to your place by Liz. Right before George's butt made contact with the seat, he paused in midair. Oh. Wait, I forgot the chili flakes. Nope. That's it, I got you. Derek winked at his little bro and said, and said younger brother, plopped down into the chair. The scrambled eggs piled high on George's plate, jiggled. Derek pushed off the cushion, took a few long strides into the kitchen, and retrieved the tube of deep red edible confetti. Rather than walk over to the table, Derek stayed right where he was and lobbed George's chili flakes over the counter. It's up! The receiver snatched it right out of the air. George looked at the item now in his hand and chuckled. Good pass. Not rusty yet. Derek saluted from a distance as George began to liberally sprinkled chili flakes over every part of his meal. At the other end of the dark wood table, top another familiar, a familial exchange occurred. Mrs. Aras rubbed her littlest as child bowed back and spoke to him gently. Mm -hmm. Nico, are you eating? Her sweetness got a lukewarm shrug of one shoulder from Nicholas. His phone remained in his grasp in the center of his attention. Food wasn't enough to sway his focus. I'm just going to have a bowl of cereal. You continue to relax. Maybe you should eat more. A bowl of cereal isn't much of a balanced meal. Yeah, I'd have cereal too if I needed to eat. How sweet. You made your love for cereal public, you joked. Someone that's a busy boy, you tease. Hey, Nico, are you texting somebody? I'm just going to relax quietly. It's none of my business. Mrs. Soros gave the teen one final pat and left it there. She was content that he was at least going... He wasn't going hungry. Unexpectedly, your ears perked at the smallest squeak, and then, unmistakably, rush of running water. Once again, your gaze went to the opposite side of the room. Derek's back was turned to the crowd, and the clatter he was making continued with clanging pans. The actual reason why Derek had gone to the kitchen and stayed there became evident. He intended to wash the dishes. Ooh. Uh, nowhere but the Sarah's house would such a gesture to met with swift descent. But Derek had... Derek and his impulse to do everything with everyone infamous. Son, you are our guest. And you didn't even eat. You can't even be the one who cleans it up. Liz acted mostly as an observer to the family circus, though I couldn't help tisking about it under her breath. What an absolute menace of politeness. She chuckled, boo. No, let me do it. I can help too. Don't leave me. You definitely reach out for her. I'm going to say don't leave me. You truly pitiful plea didn't go unheard. Nori. Derek's face turned just enough to peek at you. A tiny smile pulled at the corners of his mouth. I'm so alone. Right here. It doesn't count. Fine, I can't abandon you. He lifted his head high and rolled his shoulders in preparation. Then he began the long journey from the kitchen to the living room. Mr. Sars and his junior gave a round of applause as the eldest son left the sponge behind. Soon, breakfast at the Sars' home was finished. Nico did put his phone down for long enough to pour cereal and milk into a bowl. The kitchen was cleaned by George and his parents. Derek remained seated with his idle hands in his lap like the proper guest he had always been at your place growing up. So, Nicholas spoke without being spoken to for the first time in an age. And more amazingly, the phone was gone. It must have returned to the comfort of Nicholas's romper pocket. Want to see the pool? There's one here too. We can dip our feet in it and get some sun and hang out. 
A pool? As a young lady raised by the shore, she had an ingrained beach snobbery. But she didn't need a glare from Derek to correct her attitude. I'd check it out. Okay, we'll see how it stacks up to the old one. Derek piped up in agreement as George nodded along. Let's get to it. Let's do it. Go on. That's a perfect plan. You go enjoy yourselves. Dad and I will stay here, take a break from the parental supervision. Mr. Saras had a very proper shortle. They certainly do not need any supervision. They are very mature adults in their own rights. Besides Nico, he but he is close. His childlike gleefulness was followed by a frustrated sigh that was distinctly teenager like. We're leaving now. Nicholas said we, but was obviously going with or without anyone else. He was grown up enough to make that decision. Nicholas slipped the key off the hook by the door and was out. Her goodbyes were exchanged, and the rest of the sibling group made a beeline to catch up with Nico. Their target was strolling through the hall, hands on his hips, whistling a tune. His terseness had cleared entirely as soon as he had left. Nicholas cast a glance back at the crowd stumbling up to him. He offered a smile and struck up a casual conversation. I've gone down to the pool for at least a couple of minutes almost every day since summer started. It's basically a ritual. That's cool. You need your daily dose of chlorine. Yeah, I do, bro. The party of five continued onto the ground floor of the apartment condo and out back, Nicholas took out the key card for the pool door. He already had it on him before ever suggesting the idea he meant when he was going there was a regular occurrence. The normal key he must have took the normal key he took must have been for the house. The area itself felt familiar as it as if you were the one going there every day instead of Nico, a pale blue rectangle surrounding by rows of identical lounge chairs. It was a pool. Just another generic chair pool. You like pool you like the well, you like both pools of Sarah's I brought you two, but this pool is... I just another generic pool. It wasn't great, but the pool couldn't be blamed for that. It wasn't a boring pool. Um, what would it be? Unexciting in the apartment complex pool? Or two descriptions that could be separated? While everyone else stalled at the entrance, Nicholas kept on walking. He headed straight to the edge, crouched low to roll up his pant legs, shifted onto his butt, and dunked his feet into the water. Liz and George shared a side-eye glance. There had been an assumption that you'd been hanging out together. Nicholas, however, didn't show much interest in that sentiment. His mood had been all over the place, and ultimately Liz and George elected to give him space. The two camped out on the two camped out on two side-by-side -side lounge chairs, close enough to keep an eye on Nico, but not enough for conversations to be audible between the pair and Solo. Derek watched the chips fall. Despite this supposedly being a fun and sun adventure with the whole gang, he was frowning. The water sloshed from Nicholas kicking his feet. His eyes were towards the sky, and those long strands of brown hair were nearly brushing the concrete tiles. He felt much further away than he physically was. Anyway. I'm gonna go sit with Nico. Feet in the pool is the only way to go, and he might like the company. Would you mind if I wanted it to just be me and him? It's been a while since he's gotten any one-on-one -on -one time. You don't have to worry about me for that. You're so polite. I'm not mad, but it's a little disappointing. I think I'll survive, Derek. I'll be like four feet away. I prefer to talk to him too, but he's your brother. I won't push. I understand. Um, of course you wouldn't mind. Of course I wouldn't mind. Yeah, you don't have to worry about me for that. You're so polite. Thanks, Nori. Maybe it's not a big deal, but I'd hate to make you feel like I ditched you out of the blue. Derek, it's okay. Go to your brother. Yeah, see ya. You waved on another off and parted ways. Your assigned companions were stretched out quite comfortably as you approached. Neither lifted their heads from the rest underneath them, but their eyebrows went higher. Hello. Hey. I have arrived. You sat on the edge of George's chair. You sat on the edge of Liz's chair. You sat on the floor in front of the lounges. You stayed standing. You took Liz's. Took the chair on Liz's right. We're going to take the chair on Liz's right. It was free and next to your sis. That was all you needed. She watched you intently as you settled in. How kind of you to spend time with your older sis. Your charming gentleman is in the other direction. I figured Nicholas would be first time alone time with Derek. Hey, you're one. You're the one who abandoned me for George. I came for George, actually. You're welcome. I miss your snark, Liz. You tease. I miss you, Liz. Um, how you're the one. Hey, you're the one who abandoned me for George. Meekly, George responded to the quip meant for your sister. It made him too bashful to ignore. She wasn't trying to abandon you for me. No, I was. Liz, you and your sister grinned wickedly at each other, sensitive George. 
Sorry, y'all. I was. I need. I needed a drink. Shit. Then Liz primly smoothed her romper while working the crookedness out of her expression. Well, before you arrived, Borgie here mentioned the recent Father's Day celebration that happened and how mild it was fitting for him, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And she just had to give her usual Elizabeth commentary right now. Their plastic seats creaked as Liz and George stretched their torsos to lob mutual glowers across the space between them. And then they fell back down in all smiles and snickers. But as I was saying, nothing about the event was unexpected. Though, it's possible my standards are too high. I need to accept that nothing will ever top the first time. How can you beat a couple of 13-year-olds skipping town to have Father's Day party with one of their sisters and no dads in sight? Liz lifted her hands off her lap and spread them out in a wide shrug. Oh well. Father's Day parties are predictable. You should look in the mirror. I knew you'd be joking about that forever, and you still are. Maybe you're predictable too because she squinted at you coolly with a retort already on her lips. It's my responsibility as the oldest to carry on the family history, especially the embarrassing pieces. Oh, I know you have to. The more something means to you, the more sarcastic you have to be about it. That one got her to pout. Sheesh. Liz normally resolute attention span began to waver. It was because George had first. George's head first. She had been distracted by him and his disturbance was his brother's. Derek and Nicholas remained on their own. The men on the water edge were in their own little world. The elder had an arm around the younger's shoulder, whose head was resting against the taller Sarah's shoulder. George couldn't know what they were saying from the distance, or if they were even speaking, or what expressions were on their faces from that perspective, but his gaze remained set. George? The unexpected firmness in Liz's voice entirely snapped him out of his growing revere. Yeah? Excuse me. There's something we must discuss. There is? Well, you danced around the details, and now that we're face to face, you must tell me, what is this person you're seeing actually like? Huh? What? You're dating some stranger? Maybe, we don't have a label, but well, I can't believe it. How did you know, Liz? I had a feeling and ask. We do text and call, you know. You made it sound so simple. Maybe it was. You hadn't been bold enough to ever broach the subject. Let's not lose focus. George, how can I judge if they're good enough for you if there's nothing I can scrutinize? And is they even right? I am starved for details. Well, Z has Z, Zim, and Zer pronouns, so... Progress, we made them. What else? What's their name? Nova, we're both at the same college, both in STEM, and met at a speaking event where people from different majors and classes all attended. Oh, how did it happen? You two making a connection? These two should be together. Basically, between talks, most people hung around the halls waiting for the next to start. Neither of us made much of an attempt to strike up conversations with the others and ended up gravitating towards each other silently. Your sister couldn't help interrupting. The comment in her head was too good to keep to herself. She giggled delightedly. Gravitating. What a way to describe a couple of nerds coming together. Go on. You know, I'm not an expert in small talk or that interested in it. Nova overthinks things. It makes chatting with strangers a challenge. But after waiting around for what had been at least 15 minutes, Z started asking me questions. It went from there and has kept going. We exchanged numbers at the end of the event. Back then, I thought Z had gotten bored after doing nothing for so long, but Nova told me later that Z had, uh, Z, Zay, I don't know, had been trying to get himself to just say something already the entire time. They also said the reason Zay decided to talk to me in the end was because my forest tranquil features. I don't know exactly what that means. The sight of George was so absolutely aglow was enough to make Liz shrivel. Oh no, I'm being won over already? Who will be a bad cop when you bring Zim home? Derek, I doubt it. George is darling and deserves everything. I don't doubt anyone in her. Derek can be serious when he wants to be. No one needs to be a bad cop, Liz. Nova's great, George. I bet Nico would. He's got spunk. Don't worry, sister. I'll be kept back up. Um, George is darling and deserves everything. I doubt anyone would hurt him. We can only hope. Uh, thank you. You, Liz, and George continued to familiarity chat amongst each other, but eventually... What's up, everyone? Tilted your face up, standing over the three of you was a solid figure of Derek Sarez. Behind him was Nicholas, fiddling with the strand of his wild mane. The youngest and oldest Sarez had ended up their quality a long time. Had have ended their quality a long time, excuse me. Whatever went on between them, they didn't mention it. George or Liz didn't ask. Your sister was keen to pry into George's romantic life, but not but not the worries between two brothers. Welcome boys, take a seat wherever you like, I don't mind. The last hints of Pensiveness lingering around Nico softened at the brash greeting. 
I'm the only person in this pool area who actually lives here. Where did you get all that authority? This is the boss wherever she is, whether it's true or not. Let's chuck a dignified pose with one shoulder jutting forward and another hands on her hips. But the fact that she was lying down while doing it made it fairly silly. It's easy to be in charge when you're away, when you're always the oldest. No matter how tall or muscular any of you kiddos get, I've got two to nine years on you. Don't forget it. We won't, I guarantee you, you bring it up often enough to ensure that. Good. So are you going to accept my graciousness? I think I'm going to pass for all the chairs promise of lounging. I don't feel comfortable in them. They're always too slick or stick to your skin and no way slippery with zero in between. I'll miss on the seat too. Of course you will. George and Liz were so tickled by their simultaneously response that you were sure that they would have high-fived if he wasn't so reserved and she was not so set on behaving maturely. Nico's slight frame was entirely unmoved by the teasing. Derek, however, did react with a little awkward chuckle. The now whole group was able to reunite with ease as that the five of you had been chatting the entire time. Liz hummed, self-satisfied. I'm not complaining, but I have to say it's so weird to be sunbathing on a pool and not a beach. Mm, weird is the word for it. Not good, not bad, just weird. Crossing his arms and letting his eyes shut, George shared his own perspective. It was rare, but also always welcome. I think it's weird to be at this pool, not the one we grew up with. Oh yeah? Only ever saw it from a distance. I didn't know the joy of truly being there. That's yeah. too bad. Yeah, it's better than this one. Yeah, for me too. While the brothers were set on the not nostalgic grins, Liz's smile was far more devious. Hmm, if you want to, I wonder if we could sneak a peek. All the gentle sentimentality from George's face dropped to the floor and metaphorically shattered. The idea of doing that never in his lifetime would have crossed George's mind if he had been left on his own, but Liz was here and continued to make her case. There has to be a way to slip in. We don't have to be long. No one will know we actually live there. Elizabeth never changes. Her rule-breaking intentions were brushed off entirely with a light-hearted laugh by Derek. It was nothing more than talk, at least it had been until a calm, even voice made it real. We could do it. The lock broke years ago. No way they fixed it. Derek snatched the mantle of brazen and due shock off of George due to the middle son's own stunning suggestion. Nicholas whistled in amusement. He wasn't nearly as scandalized. She really brings out George's bad boy side. Damn straight. Maybe I shouldn't have brought her here after all. You had no words rude, you can't take back winning Liz now. George, I appreciate your sweetheart side and bad boy side. Um, I don't know Derek's supposed to see run in the Um, George, I appreciate your sweetheart side and bad boy side. Thanks, Nori. Liz, George, and Nico, the troublemaker trio, which they now were, shared sneaky glances between one another. Oh, you can't be serious. We're already at a pool and not even swimming. We don't need another more illegal one. You shook your head. What a buzzkill. You nodded along with your Derek's reasonable points. I can't do that. I really can't. Boys, listen to your big brother. Liz, listen to your little sibling. Come on, it's really a crime. Don't be a bore. Well, uh, we're gonna we're just gonna agree with Derek. I don't feel like going over there. You're agreeing with decency was followed by a pair of groans. George was George and Nico were pounding. The oldest and allegedly most mature. There was another matter entirely. Well, let's be fair, it's still three against two. Fully committing to the criminal persona, Liz threaded her fingers together and spoke with leading coyness. She cared nothing for what was fair, but could use it to her advantage against Derek. Having to play heroes suited Derek Suarez, he leveled a cool glance at Liz, not backing down one inch. He had his own reasons to feel confident. Are you sure there's the standing? I'm saying for sure that we shouldn't go. It's the opposite of being good hosts. The Suarez brothers are better than that. She gasped. It was obvious where that was going. She turned from Derek to look at her soon-to-be former cohorts. The defiant gleam in her eyes had faded entirely, replaced by steadfastness. It's probably for the best that we don't. Mm -hmm. There's nothing we could do there and that we can't do here. In an instant, Liz was alone in her position. It would be a sad day when Derek, in your earnest advice, couldn't reach through to the babies he'd set. Liz rolled her eyes. It was funny how that was the signature of the oldest in your own family and the youngest in theirs. Her tight lipped smirk was still all her own and present in the moment. We'll stay. Phew, a bullet was dodged, thanks. No worries, I figured I could count on my bros. George and Nico being probably like the good-natured big boys they, they were. As long as you and Derek were there to watch over them, they wouldn't be led astray by other parties. After a near disaster, the gang resettled into their places at the appropriate pool. The hangout session continued on as intended. George stood near his brothers, and as he recounted a recent paper, 
he pinned on the Doppler effect, Nico and Derek gleefully expressed awe at the achievement. He always been smart, been the smarts of our operation. With the three chances, at least one of us guys had a decent amount of brain cells to rub together. It was nice seeing the brothers together. You aim thumbs up towards George. I'm so impressed with George. George is a book smart. Nicholas is tree smart. Brains, bronze, and looks. You brothers have it all. You're smart. Brains, bronze, and looks. You brothers have it all. A full set of rosy faces granted to you. Thanks, Nori. George's informative explanation was cut off with a fast paced techno pop beat. It wasn't a bad tune, but it was Nicholas's shriek. It made Nicholas shriek. She's calling now? He scrambled to retrieve his long abandoned phone. The events of the morning came back to you with clarity. She was the reason he's been so distracted. He watched the team cautiously, and Nico was completely frozen after managing the device to get out of his deep pocket. What do I do? Answer it. Duh. Was George's plain reply? It was perfect, re perfectly reasonable, and the other only option besides not answer it. Unfortunately, that bit of common sense was of no help to Nico. His breathing was rapid and the phone shook in his hands. Derek, you give advice. You got more of experience liking somebody than me? I only found one less than a year ago. I, in most cases, Derek was the first to jump at solving a problem, but he pretended not to see the whole scene, at least until he's forcibly been thrown into an event by George's straightforwardness. George. You knew that, Glory. Derek's brother was threatening to send him to an early grave again. There, this is not the time. How can I tell anyone else how to handle romance? Well, I always choke when I try talking to my crush. Oh yeah. Well, the brains and the brawn can't be denied for the trio, but your one weakness is clear. None of you boys can woo to save your life. She's not my crush. As much of a mess Nicholas had dissolved into, he was still together enough to set that misunderstanding straight. He was so offended, his voice cracked. She's a psychic. I've been on her waiting list for months. A psychic? Then just answer it. George reasserted in his suggestion, this time with an extra dose of obviously in, in the undertone. There was no reason to hesitate as far as he could see. It had to be done. Nico bit his lip, twisted his face away from the screen, and for good measure squeezed his eyes shut. Finally, he tapped the phone to answer. Hello? A small high-pitched voice from the other line. You knew what it sounded like because you heard it, you heard it yourself. His phone was on speaker. Nico realized with horror everyone else forced to be aware of it as well. Is this Nicholas Suarez? It's Miss Kella. I'm calling all the way from St. Sarah Bell Boarding School to tell you the future. Give me 10 and you'll know what to do then. Her catchphrase was well rehearsed and full approachability. Kella was there to serve, but Nicholas only managed to squeak and fumble to turn the speaker off without hanging up. Liz didn't have a similar struggle. She couldn't stop herself from voicing a thought aloud and entering the conversation. I've heard that before. St. Sarah Bell. What do you mean? Who are you? Rather than replying the queries, lobed at her. Liz instead delightfully declared the answer to a mystery that had been in her head only. Ah, that's where Shiloh attended high school, I think. He was also there for part-time in middle school, but that's beside the point. Ooh, you know a fellow SS bike kid? What's his last name? I can maybe, you know, if the stars align, tell you about his future. Nico only watched helplessly. He couldn't cut Kyle off by changing the phone setting now. But words weren't working well enough for him to explain that she did not have the chat with Liz. Either unaware or pointly avoiding Nicholas' estate, Liz bulldozed ahead. His name is Shallow Leon Fields. But don't strain yourself to come up with something. He's 22 and graduated from school years ago. I imagine you won't have much to say about that. That breakdown situation was punctuated by a snort from Liz. Miss Kella came right back with a scoff of her own. Before she even spoke, you got the impression Liz had met a challenger in smugness. I do know Shiloh Fields. He's got those huge eyes, freckles, and all those hats. I've always lived in this town. I didn't always go to SSB, but I was right nearby when he first moved in. So there, I know him and this whole group. They're infamous. Hmm. For all the normal snark your sister was speechless, she didn't even try to further complete. You couldn't blame her. Random psychic? Random, the random psychic, the little brother of your longtime friend, happened to call was a familiar with another of your childhood playmates. Whether it was luck, chance, fate, or pure coincidence, it was definitely odd. You saw that the Wait, Liz, what about the guy who yelled at Shiloh and us? Yeah. What the guy- yeah. Who was he? I bet he went to the same school. Kala didn't bother asking who you were. Your question got an instant reaction, huh? 
Yes, that's rude. That rude, rude man. I'll never forget it. His name was Nate. I'm sure of it. But I don't know anything else about him. That's okay. I'm powerful enough to know. It's Nate Lawson. You're right. He's a big jerk. Or, wait, no. Bay doesn't think that anymore, I'm pretty sure. Wait, who? What? Nate was mean to someone else I love, but he's so considerate. All has been forgiven. I guess I forgive him too. But anyway. Her voice dipped lower and every word was said slowly with emphasized enunciation. It was valuable info, priced at around 10 bucks and needed to be clear. My prediction is that he is attending law school and therapy. He still yells at people, but not as much or as loudly. Nate Lawson going to law school and therapy. Hmm, well, good for him. That makes three people who have let it go. A weary smile played about Liz's face. She meant she meant it. After five years of bitterness, she only needed two sentences of second-hand explanation to forgive and forget. Kala chirped again in her normal girlish tone, satisfied with the job well done. There you are. A whole reading specially for you. Alright, so you're following him online, right? You tease? Can I get a refund? It's honestly pretty nice to know what's going on. Does it count as a prediction if you talk about their current life? Alright. You're welcome. Something about that particular shout got through to Nicholas. He blinked out of his stun. He'd been stuck in for the entire conversation, sucked up as fast as full breath. Sorry about the call, it's me, Nicholas Sars. I'm here. Ooh, I almost forgot why I was calling somebody. You're the real client. What do you want to ask? It'd kind of be nice to know why this is happening so late. I thought it was going to be this morning. Sorry. Just said not sounding sorry, even a, a teeny bit. My big brother, Shand, visited, and he's more important than you. There wasn't much Nico could say against that to retort, though he still couldn't help himself. He learned how it felt to be on the receiving side of such an attitude and didn't appreciate the taste of humble pie. Both Derek and George guiltily chuckled at the si at the sidelines side at such a display of karma. Hey, the voice coming through Nicholas's phone remained unapologetic, but a spark of genuine interest in the present return to the self-described future seer. That's what you wanted to talk about. You got a big brother too? Miss Kala didn't practice the concept of client privacy. That was a second harsh lesson, Nic lesson. Wow, guys. Lesson Nicholas got in a matter of minutes. He slapped a hand against one eye and hurried to end the call before any further education of life displeasure could be taught. It's cool. Forget it. Hope you have a very good day. Tell Shan I said hi. He doesn't know who you are. Goodbye forever. From his face to the phone, Nicholas smacked his fingers against the screen to end the psychic connection. With the deep side, Nicholas... Nicholas's whole torso slumped over. He went low enough that his hands almost scraped the floor. The encounter had him deflated. What was that about? George posed the question out of a simple curiosity. He didn't give a hint of judgment or suspicion. Nicholas reacted as if George asked where the last cookie went to his crumb-covered little brother. I think it was about nothing. Total shutdown took George by surprise. He frowned the biggest brother of the bunch, took that as a sign to step in with a soft smile and the most parental words. Well, Nico can have his fun. We've all wondered about what might happen in the future. George's usual placidity returned after a shrug. He could accept that Nicholas didn't appreciate any attempt at prying and focused on chatting with Derek about his own matters. No. I haven't. I'm not sure I want to know. Realizing everything about me and everyone else was entirely set to the point where each move could be predicted would make the world feel almost pointless, even if it was a good future. But... If it was a bad one, that'd be even worse. I'm convinced I definitely don't want to hear about my future. George nodded to himself, mainly. He'd reason it all out, and that chapter of the conversation could be closed. Until a low murmur came from the still drooping figure of Nicholas that left an ugly wrinkle across the page. It's easy for you to say. He hadn't been trying to join them into the conversation. He made it crystal clear it wasn't a topic for discussion, yet Nicholas was agitated enough about whatever it was to voice content. What's that supposed to mean, Nicholas? Priya's suspicion was no longer a description that applied to George's words. They were dripping in it. George's attention now on him, Nicholas coolly peered at his brother between the long, thick strands of his hair that dangled in front of his eyes. He didn't speak. Derek's characteristic grin strained under the rising tension. He had attempted the sidestep. He clapped his hands together and made another go at shifting focuses. Nicholas really is getting older. He sighs a lot more nowadays, huh? The weight of the world is starting to get to him. That sucks, but there's no avoiding it as you grow up. Derek succeeded in getting George's icy stare pointing his way into the 
instead, but it didn't last. George watched him intently, only long enough to read what he could from his older brother's acts and deeds. Then he came to some sort of conclusion. At that point, the middle star has turned again to Nicholas. He didn't look at him. It was through him. Some things don't change, you know, when you're older. George didn't grit his, grit his teeth or shout. There was a lack of feeling of disconnectedness. It was even worse than anger would have been. Nicholas's fingers tightened into fists, and he sprung right up. He stared into his brother's face defiantly. He shook with an, imp an impotent rage George lacked. George had been looking down on him, and easily still could, even at Nicholas's height. That added an extra sting to what the younger Saras said next. You know what sucks more than growing up? Being the last to grow up. I'm the one who gets left behind. I'm basically an only child now. It's just me and mom and dad at home. The flash of fury burned out quick. Nicholas began to crumble with every cracking sentence. And the worst part is, I'm probably just being annoying, right? The spoiled baby of the family who's always crying for attention? Of course, adults have to go out and do their adult things. It's dumb to think people could actually do anything else, so I can't even talk about it with anybody. Nicholas's plight devastated Derek. He was ready to move heaven and earth to solve the conundrum of aging if he could. But George's features didn't so much as twitch. Did you really not tell anyone? It was a callousness that left Derek speechless. He couldn't stop the days from going by, and he couldn't even stop his younger brothers from being mad at each other. I wonder what they're so pissed about. Nicholas and George Saras glared at one another unflinchingly. And what is that supposed to mean, George? I have a cough drop in my mouth, by the way. Sorry. You told Derek, didn't you? You knew how you felt. And I bet he knows what that call was about. What else would he have been talking about by the pool? You can always talk to Derek, only him. George had said it without saying it. He was accusing Nicholas of loving Derek more than him, and George hated that. Well, am I right? The staring contest ended right there as Nicholas hung his head down, dropping his glance to the floor. That was only a battle. The war wasn't over yet. You're so smart, and somehow not smart at all. Unaffected by the insult, but distinctly frustrated from the lack of a real answer, George once again looked at Derek. Derek's mouth had continued to hang open in horror, but he finally closed it. He, t he, he too turned his gaze away from the middle child. He didn't have any words to offer that time. George stood there between his two silent brothers, futilely turning from one to the other. They were crowded together in the same space, but seemed to be so far away. Ultimately, it was the lack of response that George took as an answer. All that alone, right? Next to the ones who he cared about the most, George whispered Fine. bitterly, I knew it. The suffocating stillness exploded. Nicholas wasn't finished. You don't know shit. I know there's no need having three of us around. Derek is more enough for everybody. Shots were fired back and forth with no ground gain on either side. I was literally six when I was obsessed over Derek. You can get over it already. I'll get over it as soon as you do. Nicholas thrust his arms out wide, caught up in the heat of a feud. The need to take George down, he sacrificed the secret he held on to so tightly. Well, guess what, George? I did tell Derek about that call. That means he can tell you all about how I never even mentioned him to the stupid psychic. I have two older brothers, not just him. I haven't forgotten, and even though you're so sure I have, when I, when I asked for the reading, Derek was already long gone. I wasn't going to demand the universe to bring him back. He had better things to do. Hey, that's not... Derek instinctively spoke out against the idea that his family was such a low priority, but managed to hold his tongue. This was between Nicholas and George. Neither could see Derek amid their mutual dis misdirected hurt. I wanted to ask how much longer I'd at least have you nearby. Maybe you'd go away after college, or maybe you'd stay here. I don't know. But you might have felt bad if I asked you directly in case you were going to leave. I didn't want to hold you back from going... For whatever you for whatever life you had in mind with or without me around and that's the only reason it was easier to admit to derek so there nico's arms were folded defiantly as he mimicked and the snide closing remark the psychic used to tell liz off however nothing came nothing about him came across as truly satisfied Nicholas, he had to twist his face the way to try hiding how glossy his eyes were nicholas couldn't avoid the throat clenching emotion in his voice George was completely floored, shock, sorrow, and relief, fought for control over his face. It contorted with deep creases. You understood You understood then why Derek had to keep quiet about what happened. It wasn't his place to admit something like that on Nico's behalf. 
After a, a pained stretch of silence, the feeling that settled in George's heart was an Olympic-sized pool of regret. It was a struggle for George to speak. He swallowed thickly. His Adam's apple bobbed. He didn't ew. He didn't try to cover how watery his eyes had become. You were right about me, and I was wrong about you. I haven't gotten over the memory of being the odd man out, even though it was years ago. That's not fair. None of it has been. George looked to the sky, getting lost in the next expanse, as his mind sank deep into the past. You and Derek have to have moments that are only for you two. We're not a set. We're individual people, and we have our own relationships. So to me, it's still always felt as if there's more moments of Nicholas and Derek than any other. When I was a kid, I never thought I could win. You were clear about whose company you were looking for, and I didn't want to make things awkward by being a third wheel, and I mostly didn't want to test the water to see how much I was welcome between you and Derek. I was too afraid of that, and I wouldn't be. It was better to tell myself I didn't need to be a part of it. His eyes and hands squeezed shut. George was unable to face his brother directly. He still forced himself to continue. But as much as I continued counting myself out, I wanted to be included. I wanted you to say George was back when I showed up, or that you wouldn't go somewhere if I wasn't coming too. And I wish I admitted that a long time ago. The, sniff, the stiffness over George's whole form released after he said his truth. His fist unclenched, his shining earth green eyes could be seen again. He let go for real. While George was a pillar of peace, his brother was the opposite. Nicholas vigorously scrubbed out his face, transferring tears and snot to his bare arms rather than his face. When he could at least pretend he had pulled himself together, Nicholas spoke again with absolute conviction. I'm sorry I ever treated you like that. Back then, and still now, all I think about is how I feel on stuff. Obviously, it was easy for me to move on as if nothing happened because I was the one getting my way. I stopped wanting it to be that way, and that was my closure. But now, you're the ones having a good time while I'm watching on the sidelines. There's barely a place for me anywhere, anymore. I really know how it feels, and instead of maybe getting some empathy, I still only thought about me and needed everyone else to care. Oh my god, sorry. Sorry, George. I guess I got what was coming with us. The conclusion brought a disagreeable frown on George's face. He looked over the youngest through a narrowed, serious gaze, but the firmness was founded on affection. It was unmistakable then. George wasn't simply a middle child. He was an older brother, all along in his own way, and even when Nicholas couldn't see it, he always had been. Nicholas, no you didn't. You were in elementary school, remember? Why should you be punished for that? Besides... You're not giving yourself enough credit. Me and Derek did what we wanted to do with your support. It's been years since you've put your feelings over ours. Going to college, moving out, growing up at different times, it brings separation. But abandoning you isn't what what you deserve. And even if you did, I wouldn't be glad over it happening anyways. I don't care about fairness. I'm biased. George's brows stayed pinched, but he lost the air of a teacher. Schooling their misguided student, the warmth of his affection was too apparent. Above all else, my family should get as much good as they can, even if it means they're spoiled sometimes. They should be oh, spoiled. Sorry. And that sentiment goes double for my little brother and Derek might have too, but don't forget either. Nico, you're the only one I've got in the whole world. Nicholas's tears went unwiped. They were free to roll down his face while he shot as loud as his lungs could manage. I love you, George. When you decided to pick a college nearby, that was one of the best things that ever happened to me. It's great when we work on those way too big puzzles together and play weirdest games we can find. It's I'd never want to lose that, even though I know you can't hang around here for the rest of your life. I want you to keep coming back. I'm grateful every time you come through the door. George's lips trembled. His blinking was rapid, but for some, someone as reserved as him, it was a display of emotion no lesser than Nico's heartfelt declaration. I don't want to lose you either. I love you. Sheepishly, George lifted his arms from his sides. It was a small, subtle gesture. He didn't even bring them up all the way, but he took initiative to reach out. Nicholas didn't need any more of a sign than that. He bounded ahead and jumped into his big brother's chest. George, George's long-held fears of rejection were shattered for good. Whew, y'all, this is a long episode. I actually thought it was going to be ending. Now I look like Boo Boo the Fool. It took a second to get over the emotional and physical stun of Nicholas's hold, but soon George reciprocated. The two embraced one another fully, with nothing left standing in between. They were left in peace. But once it was over, the two younger, the two young men began to part. The peace missing from their brotherly bond took a step forward. I'm sorry too. The unexpected statement got immediate laughter from the reciprocants. 
George and Nicholas threw their hand, their heads back and stood un unified, unified with an arm over the other's shoulder. What did you even do? For those two, nothing was more of a joke than Derek, Mr. Responsibility, the perfect guest, Sarez, needing to apologize. Derek scratched at the back of his head, accepting his turn as the third wheel. He might be awkward over butting in, but Derek absolutely meant what he said. I did way too much of the wrong things and not nearly enough of the right things. I'm the one who insisted on handling Nico all the time because I didn't want to ask for help and because I saw myself as the only big brother of the family. My overinflated sense of importance and... I don't know what the fuck that martyrdom is what took away any space for George, but that was only when I thought there was something I needed to handle. If everything was fine, I wasn't there at all. I was too busy with school and practice and practice trying to prove myself. Neither of you are to blame for how everything went down. You had to be demanding to get my attention or you had to stay out of my way. Really messed up. I should have been there. <sighs> Not more, but better, and let you have each other too. The least I can do is apologize. The eldest attempt except responsibility was met with an almost fatherly chastening from both of the younger siblings george was able to glance down at derek the way he could with one little brother while nicholas shook his head and let out a world weary sigh that's not true at all yeah no way derek i took demanding attention to a whole other planet sure i was a kid but that doesn't mean it was cool and easy to live with you did the best you could better than i would have if I had to be responsible for one, can you imagine what disaster that would have been? We wouldn't have survived this long. That imagination brought Nico's giggles back. It lifted a sad smile to George's face. Not the comment itself, but seeing his younger brother happy. He spoke sincerely to his older one. Okay. I need to say sorry to you. You didn't try to push me aside. You didn't even have a chance to. I saw what I saw between you and Nico. How you were so close. You had something that I wasn't a part of. But I decided entirely on my own to wait around for you both to come to me while... That never happened. While never attempting to be there for either of you, I should have made an effort for my family. You were there for me. George and his calm presence was one of a kind in his family. He was used to those around him being far louder. However, Derek and Nicholas's insistent yells still caught the middle son off guard. It was full of rejection of his earnest admission, but as much as George believed that about himself, the refuting of it wasn't a surprise to anyone else. Each brother viewed their own thoughts as a source of all the problems, while the others could barely see those shortcomings past the love they held for their family member. From one end to from end to end of the semicircle of Sarez's, smiles begin to spread. Alright, we're all sorry and none of us need to be. How's that? It's great. Great. The two spoke the same words, one after the other, still linked together. Derek watched them, swelling with pride that he got to call them his family, brothers, and his friends. Perfect, but let's reframe what I was saying. Derek had a grin, bright with confidence. He never looked more like a brother he hoped to be, as he strode up to be his little, up to his little siblings. He clapped a hand to each of their backs, making a proper huddle among the trio, the sti and stared them head on. Nico, if you ever decide you were too big to need your older brother anymore, I'm never wanted to see me again. It'd break my heart. Please don't stop letting me be there as much as I can. Nicholas sniffled one more before nodding, determined. George, you'll always be my co-pilot. I know you've been backing me up since we were kids, and you're welcome with me anytime and anywhere. Your presence is always my pleasure. A dark red flushed over George's face. He was too embarrassed to react with steadiness. Instead, he offered a shaky thumbs up in the center of a loop. It was true that George, it was true that George and Nicholas is reliable big brother, and he might have been the tallest of the bunch, but in front of Derek, you could never miss that he was also a little sibling. Letting out a bark of laughter, Derek gave the boys another smack across their shoulder bones for good measure. Oof. And I promise that I'll always find a way to see you sooner or later. And when I can't be there in person, I'll call whenever. We're never going to lose touch. I love you, bros. Tightening his grip on their shoulders, Derek physically signified his vow to never let his brothers go. Nicholas responded by letting his head rest on Derek's solid arm. Thanks, Derek. I call, and I can call too. I love you same for both of you and what he said I'll call and I'll love you and I love you not I'll he followed after Nicholas and more than words George placed his cheek against the well-trimmed side of Derek's head this time with the full trio of Sarah's brothers snuggled in a loving embrace he looked over in relief the tension hurt subsequent comfort had been easily felt even without participating he'd been entirely frozen attention fixed on the three brothers until a nudge on your arm Brought focus to your own situation. Liz was smirking at you. At some point, both of you had stood. You couldn't remember exactly when you'd gotten on your feet. 
In the spirit of sibling affection, let me say that I appreciate being here together with you, Nori. Because it'd be even more awkward if I was stuck watching the scene by myself. Just don't interrupt. I wonder how much longer they'll go. I love you, sis. I think it's sweet. My thoughts exactly. I love it. Um. Wow. Love you, sis. And I you, fellow sis. The two of you snickered in the palms of your hands. It was an attempt to be a little quiet, but your own sibling shit was notable enough to gain onlookers of its own. Your sister and you glanced over to the intimate scene of brotherly love and only to find a group of them staring back at you. Three men expressed a gradient of embarrassment, Nico being the, le the least fussed and George being the most. Derek was in the middle of the scale, too amused and uplifted to feel that ashamed. But each came with the exact conclusion about it. One more apology was needed after all. Sorry. Totally forgot you two were there. Oops. Sorry again. It's my fault. I pushed Nico to talk at a bad time and we shouldn't have aired all that in front of you. I would say not. She leered forward and the floral bracelet she wore jingled on her wrist. From the dramatic way she placed her hands against her hips. You know, I was very upset when you spoke about Derek being enough for everyone. I could hardly stay out of it. No offense, but George is my favorite of the Sara's trio. Liz wasn't known for her subtle touch. She was one of those one of the nose with all her thoughts and opinions. That kind of directness could only lead to one thing, George blushing again. Liz, you don't have a large hand landed square on George's head, startled him into stopping. It was Derek. He winked at Emily. Hey, she's allowed to speak her mind after we did, and it's a solid choice. Agreed. That was a sensible lady with good taste. George smiled Thanks. shyly. Both of my brothers are my favorite. Me too. Right. Same. Responses flowed in one another, the other in perfect order, like dominoes, lined up exactly so. He smiled over the exchange. I can never pick only one. Nicholas is my favorite. George is my favorite. Derek is my favorite. Derek is my favorite. Really? Really? Yeah, another smart call, Derek. It's the best. Not even joking when I say that is the answer that makes the most sense. Glancing between the faces of each, nothing. Noting the individuality and familiarity in their features, you thought getting to spend this trip with the brothers was something you'd always been thankful for. When Derek's laughter filled the air, it rang differently than before, playing a new song. If I was younger, this would have been the point where I'd be jumping right into that pool, clothes be damned. Luckily, I'm enough of an adult to remember that I've got an expensive phone in my pocket, not to mention my wallet. You shook your head in amusement. Disaster averted. Um, I kind of want to. I was going to leave my phone and stuff on land. Still jumping in the pool. Just got to get my stuff down. Um, what if you left your Disaster averted. George gratefully took a seat once more. After so much excitement, a metal pool chair was a welcomed friend. You and Lid Liz lounged by him. Even Derek and Nicholas gave the chairs a chance. Your, your merry gang of five wild away the best afternoon together. The lives you were leading were so different that there was never an end to new things to tell in here. But eventually it was unanimously agreed that it was time to bring the party back to the Sara's home. The kids ought to visit with their poor old parents, as Liz put it. The pool that was almost abandoned much earlier was officially left empty after a brief stroll. You made it back. It was nearly evening by then. So, Welcome home. Did you enjoy the pool? She moved out the way to let you all inside. Derek hesitated before bringing up the rear. It was hard to ignore that. He was shyly scratching his cheek and keeping his head down now that you were inside. It was great, I'd say. Right, guys? Uh-huh, it was. Yeah. Good, I'm glad to hear that. Mr. Saras gleefully made his way over when he realized your group was back. His eyebrow arched and you could feel his mischief coming. At least someone didn't jump in while fully dressed, right? They were all well behaved this time. You shrugged nonchalantly. I'm grown up now. You laugh with them. Darn, I knew I was forgetting something. You were embarrassed. He brought it up. You shrugged nonchalantly. Yeah, we managed to avoid that this time. I'm not surprised. You're mature adults. When's this day gonna end, y'all? Derek smirked, remembering that incident, incident vividly. The younger brothers snickered quietly from the sidelines. The next few hours passed by at a more leisurely pace. Together, progress was made on a thousand-piece puzzle. At one point, Derek plucked one of the pieces from the I have no idea where this goes pile and tossed it at Nicholas to catch his attention. Without taking his eyes off the puzzle, Derek wondered out loud if he could take the switch over to his place for the night. He had played it as if he was no as if it was no big deal in the hopes that Nico would feel less pressure. Nicholas let out a deep sigh but got up anyway, just as Derek had always struggled to say no to him, Nicholas equally couldn't deny his big brother's request. He returned a few minutes later holding the console with a tangled power cord and a couple controllers piled on top. 
I'm guessing you wanted two controllers. That was exactly right. He knew Derek wasn't getting it for himself alone, but in order to experience it with you, looks like Derek needed to buy an extra controller himself. Oh, thanks. Nicholas's gaze narrowed as he pulled everything closer to his chest. But before I hand this over, do we play a few rounds with the family? His eyes went wide and pleading. Instead of answering, Derek turned to you, his head tilted a little. Asking for your opinion, you nodded. We'd be staying here for a while longer then. That's fine with me. Cool. He shifted back to his little brother. Game face on. I hope you're ready to lose Nico. That's cute. Don't prepare your victory speech just yet, bro. George, you're in too? It is not a choice. A tiny piece of cardboard in George's hand dropped out of the kitchen counter as an unexpected enlistment. He blinked but then Sorry. smiled. Yeah. Sara's family gathered around the TV and the brothers got the council set up. With a new battle sparked between the Sara's boys, you and Liz decided to give your moms a quick call. They were tickled to find out what happened with Liz's surprise trip. Between the four of you, it decided that Liz would go down to Sunset Bird to see them in person soon, and that you would stay in the city. Your trip with the Sara's family, and there, and there was the visit later in the summer that would center around your moms completely. After the call ended and you placed your phone back in the pocket, you had a new thought. Huh. What's that about? When are you leaving? I know you're here now, but you never told me for how long. Oh, I'm out of I'm out of here tomorrow, technically. This is a very short trip. I say technically because my flight is at 11.59 p.m. Can you believe it? Sheesh. Talk about a major inconvenience, but beggars can't be choosers, hmm, Derek? The brothers were absorbed in the game land. When Liz nearly shouted that last part over her shoulder, it was loud and pointed enough that there's no way that they could miss her teasing. Derek watched you cavern siblings over his shoulders. Cocky grin fell to a frown. Yeah, that's true. You're leaving tomorrow night. Both of you are. Derek tried to muster up another smile, but it was a weak comparison. He seemed smaller all of a sudden, squished in the center of the couch with a brother on each side. Then he shrugged. Things were starting to feel normal having you here, just in time for you two to not be here anymore. Nicholas's chin lifted at his brother's crestfallen tone. His gaze bounced back and forth between you and Derek. But you found his expression to be difficult to read. George, meanwhile, gave his big brother an understanding pat on the back. When he caught your attention, he nodded encouragingly. Without a doubt, he knew that you could rely on his family to be there and to support, you along, to support him alongside you and bring him cheer during the days you were gone. You were thankful for them. Well, I hit a nerve. Sorry. No, let's forget about that. It's not tomorrow yet. Um, you weren't sure about leaving, you weren't sure how to feel about leaving soon, you were encouraged, you were worried about Derek and knowing his own feelings, you felt a bit down about it, you agreed. Um, you felt a bit down about it. Sighing quietly, you picked up a loose thread on your shirt, you knew this was coming, but it didn't make it any less bitter. You fell into such a natural rhythm, staying with Derek, it was going to be harder than you anticipated to go back to the way things were before. The game had been paused ever since Derek stopped watching the screen, stopped watching the screen, but the scene had... The scene had as strong of an impact on Nicholas as it, as it had on his favorite person. His brows furled tensely. That settles it. Nico breathed in deep thoughts, his nose gathering his nerves, and pushed himself off his seat. He walked with purpose away from his family and towards your sister. Hi, could you give us some privacy? Us younger siblings need to talk. Liz's lips twitched, possibly with a bit, with a bite of disagreement or a question or even a snarky quip. But surprisingly, she kept it in. Okay. Oh, he's younger. He might be their cherished little one, but Nori is mine. Yeah, sure, I hear you. He nonchalantly waved her off, and Liz gave you one last brief glance. Before yielding, once again, she was gone, and it was just you and Nicholas in the corner of the room. Actually, can we talk outside? Um, alright. His behavior so far had stunned you, but you followed him outside anyway. No one tried to follow you, though. You could feel every eye on the back as you and Nicholas left. Standing in the street, Nicholas silently examined you with half-opened eyes. Your mouth twisted awkwardly as you looked around. There was always a chance that Nicholas could surprise you, but you had a good guess about what the conversation would be about. Should I be worried you brought me somewhere without any witnesses? Nicholas's cheeks puffed out into something like a pout, but he exhaled loudly and said, There's something I want you to know, so just listen. Do you remember the night you took Derek to some party thing at the club your family goes to? He said simply, he said to simply listen and then went straight into wanting to answer. Nico was trying though. You shook your head, huh? No, I don't. Almost forgot about that. I still remember. I still remember. That night was one of your fondest summer memories, though I didn't have a clue what Nicholas had to tell you about that party now. This might be wild to you, but believe it or not, that night left an impression on me too. 
I was so upset that Derek bailed on the movie. We had to go without him, and then Mom and Dad wouldn't even let me stay up late to get back to him. They tried every trick in their book to get me to go to sleep, but nothing worked. I just wanted him home. But they never did get me up. Never, they never did get me to go to sleep. I blinked myself out by accident. I burned up whatever energy I still had that late. By getting so upset, Nicholas chuckled at the memory rum in the back of his neck. His eyes remained wistfully glazed for another moment. I couldn't understand why he wanted to go away all by himself. It didn't make sense. Me, him, and George, but at that age, we know I really meant me and Derek should stay together. That's when life was the best, right? Silently nodding along. That detail didn't surprise you, but it also didn't stop the guilty feeling growing in your gut. You knew his six-year-old self well, and the last thing you ever wanted was to hurt him. At some point, I did wake up, and I rushed out to see Derek, my big brother, my best friend, and he hung out with me exactly like I knew he would. I think Mom and Dad must have gone back to the room, because I remember Derek being the one to put me in bed. He promised to tell me all about what happened. It was great. A slight smile tugged at the corner of his mouth. Nicholas gradually met. Um. Nicholas gradually met your gaze, and then he crossed his arms. When he tucked me in, I was so happy that Derek was there and talking about the cool things he did. At the time... They were the biggest and most important adventures. I fell asleep perfectly content, but when I woke up the next day, I was sad all over again. It took a minute for my baby brain to realize that almost none of the story was about the fancy party or how he was the only one of us who got to go. It was about doing something with you. Your heartbeat was louder in your ears. You inspiciously wiped your sweaty palms on the side of your thighs. I couldn't even explain that to anybody, including Derek. I didn't have the words. All anyone knew was that the poor little Nico was feeling down. Don't worry, I get it better now. Perspective and maturity and whatever. He glanced at the condo and your chest ached. You had a good feeling that he was searching for Derek. He really liked you. That's what I realized, and that's what made me sad. Derek's face, when he looks at you now, is the same as it was ten years ago. And I was wrapped up in my blankie, and he was dressed in his fancy clothes just talking about you. But does it make sense? But it doesn't make sense. Doesn't make me sad anymore. Nicholas lingering, melancholy melted into a warm laugh. I'm basically di okay. That's the point. I smile brightened your features. It was a w it was wonderful for Nico to share what he could with his own eyes, and even more amazing to know certainty, certain certainty that it was the truth. Nicholas ruffled a hand through his hair in a manner much the same as Derek did. There was no surprise there. He returned to the condo together with matching conspiratorial smiles. By the way the room hushed as you walked to the door, you knew that not a single soul was minding their own business. And despite everyone being... Wow. And despite everyone's best... At gir girl? Y'all, I've been reading way too long. I've been reading way too long. And despite everyone's best attempts at pretending to be busy, it was obvious that Liz and Sarah's family were all equally curious about what happened outside. Everything okay out there? Should I be concerned? We're fine. Nicholas had cupped a hand next to his mouth to yell at your sister. As his brain, as his brain caught up with his actions, he leaned towards you with a raised brow. We're all good, right? We're two peas in a pod. He rejoined his brothers, and you went back to Liz. After that talk, you felt a million times better about where you stood. Welcome back. I see you're still in one piece. Yeah, I'm even more whole. Oh, cute. Nicholas lifted his chin and flashed his siblings' determined grin. He cracked his knuckles. That's enough with the seriousness. Let's race. Let's race. Alright. Liz's brows raised as she watched the bizarre exchange. You slapped fingers over your mouth to muffle your laughter at first, but couldn't leave your sister hanging, so you gently got her attention by pushing her arm. They're still talking about video games, a car game. Oh, that makes sense. She combed some stray strands of her hair behind her ear and watched the chaos commence. Well, there's no reason we should sit out now. Our jobs are done. The family you and Liz included ended up crammed shoulder to shoulder on the couches. Liz announced her intention of beating the brothers in a game she had never played. Her enthusiasm was the gold win was as powerful as ever. You hoped the condo would survive the competition. Um, we preferred to watch races. We wanted to play too. There's nothing like a good racing game to get the blood pumping. Your fingers were already fidgeting in anticipation. You needed a controller as soon as possible. Count me in on us. Since there were only so many controllers, it was not. It was decided that everyone would take turns, starting from your youngest to oldest. Nicholas faked humility as he accepted his position as first. Excuse me. The races began, and the room bounced. Excuse me, with wild cheers and shouts. Even Mrs. Stars jumped in line for a race. She was a welcome addition to the event. 
Mr. Sorrows, on the other hand, had a history of gaming offenses. He was why he was watched like a hawk by the other participants to make sure that he didn't pull any funny business. But it was no avail just before the top three were decided the race was intensely neck to neck. Mr. Sorrows managed to bump George from behind with his foot and destabilize his son's driving. Not one person actually saw him do it in the heat of the moment, but there was no debate on who the kicker was, no matter how much Mr. Sarah's pleaded his innocence. The fact that his insistence was threaded with laughter didn't help his case. The rest of the rounds went off with less cheating, though weren't any less memorable. Eventually, enough of the day passed that Liz rose to her feet. It's getting late. My ride back to Sunset Bird should be coming soon. I'm gonna give my legs a chance to stretch and way outside. She flashed you a weak smile and then double checked that she had all her things together. Thanks for having me. Bye, everyone. Before she could make her exit, Derek sprung up as well. Wait, Nori and I should get going too. You don't have to leave by yourself. What a gentleman. As that, Nicholas and George finally stopped what they were doing and turned to their big brother. Both of them wore identical frowns. Derek glanced away from Liz towards the frowning audience. Sorry, we'll see you again tomorrow. He sheepishly scratched the back of his neck while his brothers continued to stare pitifully. Hey, I got an idea. Why don't you come over to my place for a, for a change? Mom and Dad are welcome. Obviously, you too, Liz. Let's do it tomorrow. The idea was met by surprise, but the room shifted positively. Getting to Derek's place was more unanimously agreed on than even Mr. Sarez began being a big cheater. A new plan made the group say... Made the group say goodbye for now. You and Derek accompanied Liz out. Though halfway, Derek paused and remembered the barrel pack inside. The barrel back inside. He almost forgot to take the console home with him again. Perfect timing or not, Derek wasn't letting it slip through his fingers. He turned. He returned in record time as if he was joining an actual race together. You hung outside with Liz until she was safely on her way home. It was still mind-blowing that you didn't have, have to center your life around a bus or a shuttle schedule anymore. By the time Liz's ride was out of sight, the sun was hanging low in the sky. It was, it would be dark soon. You hopped in Derek's car and flopped into the front seat. You were ready to settle down for the day. Derek carefully stored the console cords and the two controllers in the back seat before taking the spot behind the wheel. As soon as Derek pulled the door shut, he slapped his fingers on the steering wheel. Ooh, I've been waiting forever to try this new game. Well, it's not that new. It's already been a few years old, but you know what I mean. Shouldn't be too bad. You gave him a thumbs up. You matched his eagerness. Weren't we just playing games? You're adorable. It shouldn't be too bad. that bad. It won't. I'll make sure of it. Perfect. That's all I need to hear. Derek eagerly turned the key and the engine roared to life. Within seconds, we were cruising down the road again. Thanks for helping Liz come see me. I'm really glad. Uh, thanks for helping Liz come see me. Hey, don't worry about that. No, seriously. I mean, every bit of it. Thank you. You went the extra mile even by your normal standards of doing things for people. That's a huge deal. He peeked at you and his flushed skin reddened even more. Derek glued his eyes on the road once more. You're welcome, Nori. Believe me, it was all worth the trouble. The rest of the ride passed in a comfortable silence as soon as enough. And soon enough, you were standing at his apartment door. Derek pushed it open and motioned for you to go in first. Carrying the console and its various wires under his arm, Derek trailed behind you. He casually gestured towards the living room. Take it easy and relax. I'll get this bad boy set up. Or you can relax and I'll set up. No, how can I help? No, how can I help? He didn't move an inch. Amused. Derek's gaze moved between you and the console. Alright, y'all. This has been fun. This has been way too long. I thought it was ending. But anyways, we will definitely get back to Derek. Thank you guys for listening. I'll see you next time.